Okay, first we're going to take a look at the zero input response. And this is related to the homogeneous response that you looked at in your differential equations class. Um, um, it, um, it'll, it'll actually be identical to that except in the way in which we uh, apply the initial conditions. So you'll see a lot of uh, similarities between the zero input response and the, and the homogeneous response or homogeneous solution. So um, y0 of t, the zero input response, satisfies this equation. Again, using the notation we introduced previously, this QD polynomial and Y0 of T. We set the right-hand side of our differential equation to zero, and we look for a Y0 of T that, that uh, satisfies this equation. So, um, or again, expanding that out, you know, we get this this uh, polynomial in D directly from our differential equation. And this is the most general form. It's, it's usually uh, simpler in any specific case. Y0 of T is equal to 0. And so, uh, as you may recall from your differential equations course, we will try y0 of t equal to c e to the lambda t as a solution. Okay. And for this particular uh, form here, for, for this solution, we know that the, the derivative of y0 of t is just uh, c lambda e to the lambda t and then d squared y0 of t would just be an additional derivative of this and so we'd have c lambda squared e lambda t third derivative would be c lambda cubed and so on and so forth and so this this differential equation here becomes a polynomial equation in lambda. I can factor out all these c terms everywhere I have a d that will actually be replaced with a lambda. And n minus 1 plus, plus a n minus 1 lambda plus a n and then I keep the e to the lambda t that factors out as well is equal to zero. Uh, I'll have solutions if I can find lambda values such that this is equal to zero okay. or this was my q polynomial I want to find values of lambda such that this polynomial or q of lambda is is equal to zero. Um, typically we can express q of lambda in factored form And uh, doing that, I'll have, in the general case, you, you may need to rely on, depending on the order of the polynomial, uh, you, you may need to rely on uh, Octave or MATLAB to find these roots or do this factorization for you. Um, but for this uh, nth order polynomial, in general, we would have n roots here, capital N roots, okay. I'm going to set that to zero, and then the, the solutions are, 
then finding a particular value of lambda uh, and plugging back into my previous y0 expression um, I, I get for possible y0 of t uh, functions c1 e to the lambda 1 t c2 e to the lambda 2 t I'll get n possible solutions here okay, of this form. And the c1, c2, c n are just uh, arbitrary coefficients. The general solution is the sum of all these. So that my general solution for y0 my zero input solution would be c1 e to the lambda 1 of t plus c2 e to the lambda 2 of t plus cn e to the lambda n of t Um, there are some special cases to consider here, and so let's let's take a look at those. And for this general solution, um, if if all the roots are distinct and real, uh, we have the solution as as shown in the previous case. But there are a couple of special cases to consider. Uh, the first case is if we have repeated roots and we need to come up so if we have for example the quantity lambda minus 2 squared we'd have re repeated roots at at 2 um, uh, we need solutions for for each of those cases but we've only got one value of lambda in that case so um, if we run into a term of the form lambda minus lambda m to the r this would yield solutions actually of the form a1 e to the lambda m t and a2 t e to the lambda m T a3 t squared e to the lambda m t and so on and so forth up until we got a r t to the r minus 1 e to the lambda m of t. It will be rare for us to, to work with anything beyond a, a um, uh, a simply repeated root or a lambda minus lambda m to the second power or to the, the third power. And then the other case to consider is if we have complex roots. Um, the complex roots will always appear in conjugate pairs. So that means uh, if we get one term uh, in the factorization of lambda minus alpha minus j beta, we'll also get another term in the factorization that's lambda minus alpha plus j beta. And the corresponding roots When I set this equal to zero and solve for the lambda value, I'll get lambda values at um, alpha plus j beta and lambda equal to alpha, supposed to be an alpha, uh, minus j beta. Okay. Um, and the solution of the form then y0 of t is equal to 
C e to the alpha plus j beta t plus this uh, this coefficient will always be the complex con uh, conjugate of the first one and then e to the alpha minus j beta t would be the form of the solution. Um, if we write c, the constant, this is still general, c can be complex. If we write it in the form a over 2 e to the j theta, so this is kind of in the polar form of a complex number, then our y0 solution can be written in the form, if we apply Euler's formula as a e to the alpha t cosine of beta t plus beta and then the alpha the the a and the theta here are determined from the initial conditions of course the alpha and beta uh, come from the roots of our characteristic equation you've got to be a little careful here uh, you know uh, to find the actual root because alpha here could be positive or negative okay um, and so uh, make sure you, you solve for the actual location of the root um, in this case if if alpha is negative we'd have a negative term appearing in the exponential uh, beta actually appears here as both uh, you know as both uh, alpha plus j beta and alpha minus j beta it actually doesn't matter here whether you, whether you put in plus beta or minus beta by convention we just put in plus beta it would just affect the um, it would just affect the the, the, um, the constants when we solve of um, when we apply the initial conditions